Hello everyone, we got parts, time to finish the job. I have a brand new head gasket and a brand new set of head bolts. Now, remember that thing I said a few videos ago as how I was paying extra for brand names I can trust and all that? Yeah, that's kind of gone out the window. This, like all great works of art, is over budget and behind schedule and I'm losing my patience, so I wanted to get the job done immediately. I got one of the cheapest head gaskets off Amazon and one of the cheapest sets of bolts. Now this is a multi-layered steel plate type gasket, like the original that came out of it. Now, this one has two plates that are held together with rivets. And it's important not to put these on backwards. I mean, this one you can't really because the holes are in different locations. But on some engines you can, and the block and the head are clearanced for these rivets. So it's critical that they don't get in the way of anything. Now before we install the cylinder head, I like to talk about interference engines. The Ecotec is an interference engine. What that means is the lowest point of travel of the valves is lower than the highest point of travel for the piston, meaning if a valve opens fully and the corresponding piston is at top dead center, they will interfere. Normally that's not a problem because that never happens at any point in the four-stroke cycle, but abnormal circumstances like if the timing chain or belt snaps or if it's timed wrong during assembly or if it has an aftermarket camshaft that has too high of a lift, the problem can occur. So checking clearances is very critical. I'm not checking valve to piston clearance on this because it's all stock and it was working before. Now on these overhead cam engines, an additional step of precaution needs to be made. They should be assembled with the crankshaft and the camshaft already in timing position because if they're installed in random order, one, or in this case, two valves may be fully open, a corresponding piston may be at top dead center, and they can interfere. The head bolts are also torque to yield and one-time use. Of course, the head bolts are a lot easier to find. Just about everybody sells them aftermarket. Time to install the drive chains. Bought a whole kit. I didn't have to, but I did anyway. Everything for the balance shaft chain and the timing chain, including tensioners, guides, bolts, sprockets, more guides, chains, everything. Okay, I don't know what's going on today. There must be some kind of air show nearby or something. The planes keep flying overhead, and I've waited about an hour for it to quiet down, and it hasn't, so I'm just going to give up and keep going. So if you hear any airplanes in the background, that's what it is. Now, the kit did not include a new sprocket for the water pump, so reusing the old one. The balance shaft sprockets are going to be replaced. The, bol the bolts are reusable. The new ones. Both of them are marked intake and exhaust for the intake side and exhaust side. This one's an intake. The exhaust. And these are, uh, the recess in them is D-shaped, so 
they can only go on one way. Okay, one gear actually broke a tooth off of it while torquing it down. So, apparently these are useless. I'm just going to put the old ones back on. Crankshaft sprocket. If you're wondering what direction these go on, they go on with the timing mark visible from the outside. Now the chain. Usually they have different colored links on them to indicate timing. This one has three, but they're all the same color. So the thing to keep in mind is the furthest distance between the, between the two timing colored links is the part that goes from the exhaust sprocket to the crankshaft because it goes around the pump. So, with that in mind, we'll start on it. Now, it needs to be timed with the exhaust side timing mark down, the intake timing mark up, as they turn opposite directions. The timing marks should line up with the different colored link. These sprockets both have two different timing marks, one for intake and one for exhaust. So if you don't want to fight it for 20 minutes like I just did, make sure you read make sure you read them first. Everything installed, the tensioner, the all the bolts torqued down, the oiler, the caps, everything. Timing mark, timing marks are all right on target. So I'm going to turn the engine twice, all the way around, and make sure the timing marks are right where they should be, and that there's no interference. to find out the intake sprocket was one tooth off. I don't know how I didn't catch that. I watched the video later that I just filmed and sure enough it was that way when I put it together. So took it all apart again and put it back together in the right order. And I spun it two turns forward and then back and it's right on target. So it's okay now.
Now while I was waiting for parts, I replaced the front seal. So that's brand new. I installed the flex plate. Now the bolts holding that on are torqued to yield, but surprisingly they're reusable, at least according to the manual. Now I got all new studs for the exhaust manifold, including the ones I had to cut off. This is a universal set from Dorman. I think it was like eight bucks. So they're all brand new. Now, I was going to install the rest of the cooling system, the thermostat housing that goes on here. The problem is it practically eclipses these two bolts which go to the bell housing. And if I hadn't already done it, I'd say they were impossible to put in with all this stuff on. So I'm gonna leave that off and the pipe that goes to the water pump and the manifold until the engine's in. The water pump, I was gonna replace it because it's out, but it's, it's, still, in, it's still in pretty good shape and Removing it in the car doesn't look as hard as I thought it would be, so I'm just going to take my chances with it for now. Now the cam cover does use a gasket, and this would be probably the optimal time to replace it, but to keep the budget down, I'm just going to glue the old one back on with a bunch of sealer. Even if I bought a new gasket set, I would glue it on anyway, because you just never know. And it's the next day. So I got the engine ready to install. I've already installed the crankshaft sensor, oil pressure sensor, and whatever that thing is. Meanwhile, the car cleaned up the engine bay a little, just for fun. So let's get to it. Forgot this engine mount bracket thing. Engine is in. I have all the bolts around the bell housing, the front mount the bracket that goes between the engine and the transaxle, and the bolts on the flywheel housing on this side and underneath. So, and the torque converter bolts in. So now I just gotta start bolting up all the little stuff. All right, it's finished. It's back together. So, it's got fluids in it, it's got coolant, it's got oil, Already got gas in it, hooked up the battery, so it's time to start it up. I replaced the radiator hoses. The ones on it look like the originals, even though they're in good shape, they're pretty old. I got the modern universal hose clamps, which are a whole lot easier to install than the originals. I also preloaded the oiling system before I put the crankshaft pulley on. I spun the oil pump with a pipe until oil started coming in the uh, part where the filter goes in. So it's not going to run for very long without uh, not oil pressure. So it's time to fire it up, see what happens.
Thank you. I'm going to turn the key on and off a few times to prime the fuel system because I did open the fuel line so it's not under pressure anymore. Okay, here it goes. Oh, it's running. Sounds quiet. Yeah, I think it I think it works. I think we fixed it. Okay, first problem. Vacuum leak. Discovered cracked vacuum line, which I pointed out when I was taking the engine apart but didn't bother to do anything about. So, replaced it with a rubber hose and that fixed it. It's running pretty good now. We got some smoke coming off the exhaust manifold. I think that's oil burning off. It doesn't smell like exhaust. Next problem, the timing chain tensioner started leaking the next day. Now, if you look at this, I didn't know this, but apparently oil pressure goes through this. Now there's an oil hole right there at the end and this part where the threads go is recessed for it and oil was pouring out right here in the gasket surface. The original one, which I put back in, has the hole down here on the other end of the threads and doesn't have this groove at all. So that fixed that. Why this one is designed that way, I have no idea. But the original one works. So, in the next video, we'll talk about how great it runs, or how many more problems I've found. So, we'll see you then.